Courtney Carr has been in the hermit crab hobby for 11 years. She first owned hermit crabs as a child with ill results and is now making up for her childhood mistakes. A lifelong animal lover, she enrolled in a certified veterinary technician program and graduated with an associate's in applied science, then earned a bachelor's degree in animal science and nutrition from North Carolina State University. While at NCSU, Courtney studied, researched, and wrote papers on the coconut crab. After graduation, she was offered a paid teaching position under the esteemed Dr. Trevetti and taught the Animal Anatomy and Physiology Lab to pre-veterinary undergraduates. She led a wildlife dissection lab for the American Pre-Veterinary Medical Association Symposium and assisted with North Carolina State's vet pack and vet camp. She has worked in veterinary clinical settings providing surgical assistance, anesthesia, and nutrition consultations for both domestic and exotic animals. After moving to Las Vegas, Courtney's business focus shifted to providing quality bioactive products for exotic animals. In addition to her hermit crabs, Courtney is also the proud mom of three human pinchers and one pretty old corn snake. As a self-proclaimed science nerd, Courtney has dedicated countless hours to at-home experimentation and hermit crab research. She hopes her observations will inspire others to search for the answers on behalf of our favorite crabs. Hey you guys, I hope that you have been enjoying all the crab con talks so far. Today, I um, want to give a brief rundown, um, kind of on how to research for our crabs, where to look. Um, I know that it can get really confusing. So I'm going to start with kind of the basic things of how to find information within Facebook groups. Um, and then I'll even touch on some more advanced re researching techniques as well. Um, just for those times when the information hasn't already been put together by someone else. Um, I don't use other social media platforms, so I'm sticking with Facebook for this presentation. But if you have questions about where to find information on a specific platform other than Facebook, then you can reach out to me later and I'll be happy to find the answer for you. So, on to the crabs. And you'll have to bear with me here because I'm gonna, um, gonna be showing everything that I do. Um, that way you, it's easier to replicate at home um, if somebody's showing it to you step by step. So just about daily we see a post asking is XYZ safe for my crabs? So how do we answer that question? Where do we even begin? So I'm going to show the steps that I take um, when it's something I, I'm interested in. Um, I'm specifically going to address items that can be eaten, but the same concepts can be applied to just about anything that you can think of. So the first step is, have you checked the safe, unsafe food list? Most of the larger crab groups all have a list. Um, sometimes they can be a little bit tricky to find. So I'm going to show the two most common methods of locating these files. Um, I'm going to use Land Hermit Crab Owners Society group um, for this but the steps are pretty much the same for just about every crab group. Um, so we're already here, we're in Facebook. This is the group's uh, main page. So here you can see this tab says more. Click on that and we have files. So we're gonna pull these files up here. And as you scroll down there, there's files for so many things. Make sure you read the group rules. Those are always important. 
um, each group operates a little bit differently. Um, so we go down. We just had one by, oh, here we go. So toxic plants. So say you found a leaf that you wanted to feed and uh, you knew the type of tree it was. You could go here and see if it's on uh, the top plant list. As you go down, there's going to be more. There's a lot. So, all right. So here we go. FAQ, what foods are good and bad for hermit crabs. So then you can click on it and get into that. And check it out I'm not going to actually click on these that way I can save some time from closing windows out um, keep going down more will start loading hermit crab noms that probably has some good safe foods on that there's even a recipe book for hermit crabs here. Um, so you can come in and you can find these. So another way of finding these files is to click on this little search icon. And we can type in food list. When we do that, that is going to pull up all of the previous uh, discussions at your food list. Um, you can sort them different ways over here. You can, if you know uh, that someone's a person's specific name that posted something, you can come in and choose that person. Um, so here, pretty quick, here's here's one uh, with somebody asking for the food list. So we can just go into there. And it will pull this discussion up. And here we go, someone posted the food list. So then you can get to it that way. So again, you can search, you know, just about anything in here. So let's do, uh, we'll do Magnolia. That's one that's commonly not found on any safe or unsafe list. Um, it's usually kind of a take your own risk sort of thing. Here it pulls up all of the previous discussions about Magnolia here. You can go in and read everyone's previous comments. I'm not going to click on anybody. So I'm not going to click on any specific one here. Um, but you can go in and read all the discussions and Kind of make an educated decision that way um, sometimes people reach this point and they say okay um you know this is good enough reason for me not to feed it there's plenty of other options so i'm not gonna bother and i'm not interested in, in any more information um and that's okay that's okay to stop there um but I know some people want to dig deeper than that. And a lot of times now it's getting to the point that we have to dig deeper um, because now people are, are starting to feed things that aren't, um, aren't on list and that have never been talked about before for crabs. Um, so we have, so we will now move on to step three. Click on down here. All right, so we all know that when we Google things about hermit crabs, the results can be a totally mixed bag. Um, some results are downright wrong. Some results have bias in them. And this issue, um, it's not just for hermit crabs. It goes for everything. 
anyone can write anything on the internet and no one is going behind to check its validity. So doing uh, a basic search is okay as a starting point, but the accuracy should definitely be verified. Um, and that leads us to Google Scholar. Google Scholar is a search engine that specifically indexes research literature. Um, so this is a great free jumping off point when starting uh, to conduct your own research. So I'm going to come over here and pull up Google Scholar. And it's Scholar. Basically, oh, looks just about the same as the regular Google search page. So we've got that up. Let me click back over here real quick because I want to talk about um, alternate search terms real quick. We all know that we're talking about land hermit crabs, but there's other words for them. Um, so I'm going to go over here and pull up land hermit crabs in Google Scholar. We get a little bit over 19,000 hits, which is okay. Like I said, there's there's other words, so we can uh, try. That's going to narrow things down for us. Go with decapod crustacean there. That's going to yield us some more broad results. Um, so it's useful to keep track of these alternate search terms because sometimes you're going to have to utilize them to better find what you're looking for. Um, a lot of times there's just not literature specific to hermit crab. So more than likely you'll need to search more broadly, but sometimes it helps um, to search more narrow as well. So someone recently asked me uh, if avocado leaves were safe to feed the crabs. So I'm just going to go through and show how I went about finding information on that. And this is assuming that I've already looked at the files and the groups and I've already searched the groups and no one's ever talked about it before. So first we can start with a basic Google search. So we're concerned about the toxicity, so we'll include that in our search terms. So we'll go over here to regular Google, and we will type in oh. All right, so right off the bat, we are seeing you know, ingest, ingestion of fruit, leaf stems, and seeds of avocado has been associated with toxicosis in animals. Um, this is from the Merck Veterinary Manual, which is a good resource. Come down here, we have an article from Colorado State. So we'll just pick one and click on it. Uh, I checked both of them out earlier. They both basically say the same thing. One thing to keep in mind as you start reading articles is that things that are applied to mammals aren't always the same or even applicable um, to invertebrates like our crabs. Um, not to say that they don't matter and that it's not useful information. It definitely is, um, but just don't take it as 100% applying to crabs. All right, so animals affected. Most of these are mammals. Uh, we get down into some birds, and then we get to fish. Um, so although fish are, are uh, vertebrates, you know, that would cause me to pay a little bit more attention for crabs. So we've got that. So then we want to see um, what 
what the issue is. Uh, what is it in an avocado leaves that causes a problem? And it's a compound called um, person. P-E-R-S-I-N. So we know this. I believe this article uh, specifically says it earlier up on the page. Let's see. Yep, here we go, right here. When purify the toxic principle and avocado person, blah, blah, blah. So it causes uh, mastitis and, and lactating animals and goes over some of that. Um, so on the surface, how I said that sometimes what applies to mammals doesn't apply to our crabs. Our crabs do not lactate. Um, so it wouldn't cause uh, mastitis. Oh, here we go. All right, we'll just exit that page. All right, so we know that um, person in avocado is an issue for animals. So a lot of people, again, this is another common stopping point for people. Okay, it's bad um, for these animals, so that's enough for me not to want to risk it and stop there. And again, that's, that's a fine stopping point. But... There's always people that, that want to dig deeper here. So this is where um, your alternate search terms in Google Scholar is going to start coming into play. So we came over here into Google Scholar and we searched for a hermit crab person. Um, so that gives us one hit here, and just by quickly looking at it, I can see it doesn't really apply to us um, because the person down here is actually someone's name. So that's no good for us. So now we can try more broad, and we will replace hermit crab with crustacean. Gives us about 110 hits here, which is much better than one. This is where you have to start looking at titles, and sometimes there will be little blurbs that you can read um, that give you an indication on if you're looking at something that applies or if it's trapped. Again, down here we see that. Dr. F person. So we know that this article probably doesn't apply to us. Even if we don't know what any of these other words mean, we know that we don't care about Dr. Person. Not that we don't care, but not in this case. Um, so if we add the word toxicity here, that should help weed out um, the Dr. There are things that you can do to narrow things down. Um, another thing you can do is to add certain words that you want to pair together. That gets us back down to one here. Um, and just quickly looking at it, it doesn't really look like what we're interested in. So, We've kind of hit a, a wall here at this point. Um, there's also other little hacks, so to speak, when it comes to searching about different um, combinations. You can use different symbols you can use um, to connect words together that can sometimes yield better results. Right, so, so you, 
you know, start with your general search terms. Start changing one term at a time um, to your alternate terms um, until you kind of find what you're looking for. So then you will end up uh, finding some articles to read. And this is another good time to hunt for alternate search terms. And typically, uh, you know, regular Google search is good enough to to give you definitions of words to see if you're on the right track. All right, so we have found articles. What do we do now? Well, we start reading. Um, I'm going to open up one here. I went in and removed the quotation marks around person toxicity. Um, so I'm going to click on this one. It doesn't really have anything to do with uh, the topic at hand, but it was a good example of what I'm trying to show you next. All right, so you click on an article. Um, usually you're able to read the abstract. A lot of times you can narrow down uh, whether this article is even worth reading um, by just reading through the abstract. So let's say we read through this, we like it, we want to read the full article. So over here, we have hit a paywall. We either have to buy the article by itself or um, sign up for a subscription. And that's a bummer, right? Because we don't want to spend a whole bunch of money on articles. We would rather decorate our gravitats, right? I know I would. So. This is where regular Google will come in handy. So we're going to click on the Google Scholar. That's just a regular Google search with the title of the article that we are interested in. I've already searched through a few of these. Um, so the first one here, that was another paywall site. We couldn't access it without paying for it there. But on the second one, click on that. Sometimes you'll have to click on a few, but it's usually um, the top within the top five results that you will find a free version. So sometimes you will have an option to download like over here. And this one is nice too, because it actually um, already has the entire thing um, in digital format. So if you didn't have the space to download all of it, um, it's already here. So you could go in and read, um, this entire thing for free. So yay for free. So if you really, if there's an article you really want to read, there's usually a way around the paywalls. All right, so we'll go back over here for a second. So some extra tips here, check out, um, citations and references for the papers. It can help you locate other articles that may be of interest. Um, for this one, for this one, I believe they were all the way. All right, so there's the references inside of the paper itself. So you can go in and you can read um, who wrote the papers and the names of the papers. Sometimes just reading over the names will help you find other papers that are of interest to you. Sometimes there's an area to more recent papers that have um, 
that have used this paper as a reference, sometimes they'll reference back to each other. So that's a good way of trying to find some newer research that has happened on a specific topic. So we'll go back over here. I think that we are done switching uh, screens now. So another tip, keep focused. It's really easy to get sidetracked and to even get frustrated. That's totally normal. Um, that just means it's time to take a break and go check out the crabs. Um, and share your knowledge, share your research. The only way that the crab community as a whole progresses is by furthering our knowledge. And there's not one person alive that can possibly research every single thing that there is to research on behalf of our crabs. Um, so seek out the information that you're interested in. If you have a question, don't just wait for somebody else to find the answer for you. Go out and dig for it yourself. Um, and once you've sought out that information and you've weighed the pros and the cons, the goods and the bads, share your information and, you know, why or why not something may or may not be safe for our crabs. Um, so this screen, I'll leave this up for a second, is um, these are more free resources. Each one operates a little bit differently. So, you know, I suggest going in, kind of checking out all of them, seeing if there's one that you may have a personal preference for. Um, some are way more user friendly than others. Um, I also want to point out here, too, that when you do hit these paywall sites that require subscriptions, um, a lot of times your public libraries, your institutional libraries, like if you're in college or at a university, at a community college, technical school, most of these, if you are a library card holder, have access to these resources and you can typically utilize them for free. So if it's something you're interested in and you're having a hard time doing it all online and you would rather just have kind of an all access pass, um, reach out to your libraries and, and reach out to your local colleges because you can definitely um, get access to these things. And then here's just um, my list of alternate search terms for, um, for hermit crabs just to give you guys an idea of the ones that I most commonly use when I'm searching for things. Um, because just hermit crabs doesn't always, you know, pull up what we're trying to get at. So I will click back up here to the free resources one more time. And um, I just wanna thank you guys for supporting CrabCon. It means a lot to, um, a lot of us. I know it means a lot to Mary and Stacy. Um, so I hope that you guys get some usefulness out of all this and have a better idea of places to look. Um, that way we, more of us can start researching and finding useful information. That way we can keep helping out our little crab buddies. So I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the conference and happy crabbing!